Welcome everyone, I'm Meredith Sumter. I am the CEO of the Council for Inclusive Capitalism. And today it is my honor uh, to share with you uh, a leader at the council, our steward member, Audrey Hammetner, who is the CEO of THG Advisory Group. Audrey, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Meredith. It's a pleasure. I'm, I'm so proud uh, of the work that, that you're leading at THG Advisory Group and the way that you're bringing your actions to the council. I wonder if you could just share with us, Audrey, about THG Advisory Group, uh, what it is and what you do. Sure, so um, THG Advisory Group is an operations risk and governance advisory practice. Uh, we focus on supporting um, the development and improvement of SMEs. Um, you'd say part of our mandate is is making that shift in ESG easier, right? So we help um, SMEs identify how to smoothly and, and, and somewhat seamlessly broaden their knowledge of their impact and how ESG can actually positively impact their bottom line. Yes, yeah, and that's so true. And, and, and the way that you framed this is, is spot on, Andre, the nature of capitalism, of a healthy capitalism, is inclusive. And if everyone is not able to be part of that economic system in producing and providing value and able to consume the value that is produced, it weakens uh, the economies and societies uh, upon which capitalism is meant to thrive. Um, so I, I think that's just a, an incredibly important point. Um, I, I wonder if you can share with us at, at THG Advisory Group how a little bit more about how you help um, clients uh, with their own ESG strategies and goals? When we have a client that's focused on ESG and understanding it for themselves, the first thing that we do, which I think is, is, is crucial, is spend time not just with senior management, but also with the people on the floor, the people who are actually producing the good, talking to the clients, because the idea is the way in which you conduct the business that you're looking to do is the key to finding a strategy that works for you. It's not about taking a, a, a roadmap or a benchmark and sticking it in. It's about looking at the business and breaking it apart and identifying the pieces that make sense to, 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 to look at and to modify when you look through an ESG lens, right? So it's exact same thing you do when you're looking at environmental. What is my environmental footprint? What are the actions I'm taking? How can I reduce um, a negative action? What is a, a low hanging fruit to achieve certain targets? And then what are the long-term and medium-term perspectives? It's exact same thing on the S side. What are we doing that is impacting our society, our customers, our employees, um, and all of our stakeholders? How are, we, how are we engaging with them? So how do we impact them and how do they impact us? Mm -hmm. And what is it that we can look at within the value chain both ways that can support our business and we can make the tweak or make the change to um, fall in line with ESG directives or goals that we set as a company. And then once you do that, you sort of sit back and say, we need to make sure there's a strategic alignment with the KPIs and what it is we want to do as a company. Because the minute it costs too much, everyone starts to backtrack. But the minute you can show alignment with the company goals and what you want to achieve, very little resistance it starts to make sense. I think that's so important. How the ESG priorities, how it aligns with the company's own priorities and plans as well as how is it, how does it relate back to profitability? Absolutely. Um, with the, with the, the increased investment uh, for you know, ESG prioritization, there is also an increase in value. In addition to, there will be an increase in costs but showing how that value leads to a better bottom line and better profitability for the company is absolutely key. Um, you know, Audrey, many people view ESG as the domain of large corporations and you do a lot of work 
um, with SMEs. And so I'm wondering if you can share with us, how can smaller companies implement ESG goals into their own um, operations? And are there particular resources um, that they need uh, to support their efforts on inclusivity and sustainability? Smaller organizations that had never thought about ESG before, and now we're looking at um, and an operational improvement uh, plan, and we're introducing ESG to the forefront. Then the conversation comes down to what is your five-year vision for the company or your three-year vision, right? Where are you falling short? Because if we're going to talk about efficiencies, let's talk about long-term efficiencies, not just the efficiency of this one project here. Once you break open that conversation, then there's, there's no turning back because then we start looking at it from all angles. Well, what are you doing in terms of sales and marketing? What are you doing in terms of production? Um, what are you doing in terms of uh, your finances? Let's look at some of the processes you're going through. Have you thought about what, I can't believe your turnover is so high. What type of things are happening in the company? And then you just start digging. Companies, that's all it takes. If they look at changes through an ESG lens, as they're looking and digging, it's very clear what comes out. And then they just prioritize and choose, right? You can't do right. everything, but you can figure out what's most impactful from the issues that you're facing, impactful both on the business, financially, but also impactful in terms of the people. So if you're trying to save money, don't think about changing your staff because it costs four and a half times more money to recruit, hire, and retrain. Why not look at a way in which you can slowly improve the, 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 the performance of the people that you have by looking at where they're falling short and supporting them internally, right? Let's now invest more in well being. Um, programs, not just pizza on a Friday, but impactful well-being programs that can help to work through some of the social issues internally, right? Let's look at how the, your customers are looking at your product and let's see whether or not there's something we can do on your sales and marketing side that can improve what's happening and your bottom line right? Let's look at your procedures internally and see why people are cutting corners or, um, you know, you just, it's about opening their eyes to what ESG means, different ways in which they can factor in looking at the issues that they have, because every industry is different. And then when you take that further, you then will look for the benchmarks that work within those industries and support them on how to then create the reporting that is sustainable. I can sustain the fact that I, I, I can show you that this is real impactful change that I'm making. And this aligns with what needs to happen to show you that I am, you know, I'm doing my piece. And that's what's important. And, and as, you've, as you've spoken so eloquently, enabling the talent that you have, enabling the best performance of the company that you have it's really, it's about ESG as business excellence, um, yes. which I think is so powerful. What advice, Audrey, would you give to businesses who want to create an ESG strategy, but really just don't have an, an idea of where or how to begin? I guess the first thing I would say is it's, while it's driven by the top, the strategy has to be developed holistically. It can't, the, the strategy needs to start with everyone's input and everyone needs to also be educated on what ESG is and look at it from a lens of um, how could this truly positively affect the business? Not, oh, let's look at this as compliance. <laughs> let's figure out how we can slot things in. But literally opening the book and sitting down, not just from HR, not just from leadership, not just from the line managers, but also from, you know, a, a certain segments of people within each of those departments to start off big, then narrow it down, and then take that strategy back and say, 
here's what we want to do and here's how it's going to impact each of these departments. How do you feel as an employee about what we're saying? Knowing what ESG is and knowing our business so intimately. When people feel a part of the process, it's a lot easier to get that engagement, not buy-in, but engagement to get the results. And then it's much easier to set your and benchmark your OKRs and your KPIs and make sure that you can align it with the profitability because nobody wants their business not to succeed, right? Uh, you don't work for a company and hope they're going to increase their spending to the point that it becomes ridiculous. You also want to see them succeed. So if they can see how their contribution will not only support the business, but also make their company a better place to be, Yes, you get a lot more buy-in and they feel a lot more part of the process. Yes, that's very powerful. Andre, last, last question for you. Uh, as someone who is a pioneer uh, in, in this field of, of helping private sector actors see ESG as not a corporate social responsibility thing, but as something that is a business excellent thing, I hope that you could share with us what gives you hope. Humanity, right? I mean, it's humanity for self and it's humanity for society. So you can't underestimate everybody's situation is different and they all want to improve their own. So how do you improve your own? By improving the collective. And you always start off at home. Whether it's your home, your community, your business, your department, your, your little niche. So it's looking at and reframing the concept of, yeah, what's in it for me? When you can frame what's in it for me on a larger context, then humanity wins because you start to see a collective good. That's very powerful. Reframing the way that we think about uh, not only ESG, um, but also our agency as private sector leaders to advance ESG uh, for a more, pers uh, a more purposeful and a healthier and more dynamic form of capitalism. Audrey okay. Hammettner, CEO of the THG Advisory Group and Council Steward Member, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Meredith. It was my pleasure. Pleasure's ours.